Hey guys, welcome back to my video. And today we're gonna do a mukbang. My first ever mukbang. And I'm so excited. Okay. What I got today is gonna be so good. So, deal with me, guys. It's gonna be really, really good. Okay. Let me show you. I got some curly fries. Yes. And with that. Got, ooh, yes. Got some chicken fingers and French, well, chicken tenders and French fries. Ooh, oh my God. So I said, I know that I got my my sauce, even though I know they should have given me two to be honest. But you know what? I got ketchup, so it doesn't really matter. Okay, so so I'm gonna open this sauce right here. Ooh, yes, it looks so good. Mmm. In the center here, and along with that, while I'm chowing all this down, <laughs> I got my little drink, which was fruit punch with two big ices well, ice cubes. So, let me get a little sip. Mm. Ah, so good. All right, now let's get into feasting. <laughs> I'm so excited. Okay, so normally, mukbangs will be like you know, you talk about your life and all that, yeah, and I'm most of the time I will talk about it. Sometimes I will go, go off track and talk about other things. Oh, God. Mm. 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 Okay. I mean, oh, yes. Okay. Okay, I'm going to talk about work right now because, like, I'm off today. But the thing is going on at work is that we're losing. I work in Delhi at the BJ, so I we're losing workers like it's freaking. Like what was that movie when he's like, ch -ch -ch boom, ch -ch -ch boom. I was like, damn, we're losing members like it ain't like it ain't shit. But you know what? It is what it is. Oh, there it is. Mm, yeah, this looks so good. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Mm. Hey, like this week, we lost two members today. One was, um, one had to quit because she had to get surgery on her elbow. I forgot what it was for again. But you know what? It's cool, but she plans to come back, and I'm excited because I love her. She's awesome. And the second one, the other one got fired. I'm like, what? I'm like, to be honest. Like, that other co-worker, he got fired for his own damn good because he kept doing the shit. Yeah, it's like, it's really ridiculous. Mm. I mean, I we keep telling people at the deli, like, mostly the managers, like, hire more people. Mm, it's so annoying. But, but no. To me personally, I feel like they should just, like, Hire someone automatically when someone's this close to getting fired. And apparently, the person who got fired, they already planned it before. And they didn't, you know, usher someone in. I'm like, y'all should have just gotten someone right after you fire up someone. Like, it would have been more productive. Like, it's really irritating. But you know what? Well, mm. So fucking god. Mm. Anyway, no, so, um, a manager. I'm gonna work. Try that. Ask me, can you work? Uh, can you work? Uh, this week. I mean, on the day off. I'm like, on oh, my day off. Uh, you got me fucked up. My well, person didn't say that. I was like, mm, no. I'm like, y'all really are you trying to trying to make me work on my day off when I pretty much came. Last week, on my day off to work, because someone called out. I'm like, you have to be, you. I'm like, do you not realize, like, no, nah, I'm taking my day off. I worked on my day off before, but you know what? I was a gift. Y'all should be freaking thankful that I even came. It was really irritating. I'm like, mm-hmm. I was not having that. I mean, I love my manager. I love him. But I'm like, no. 
I'm sorry that's no. I'm not having it. And sometimes now and then when most people try to call me on my day off, I'll be saying like, I have to babysit, which I really don't. I don't babysit at all. I just want to enjoy my damn day off. Mm, I work in a deli department. Do you know how fucking stressful that fucking is? I know some of y'all out there who probably do work deli understand. Because, you know, working deli is like non-stop. They're like constant customers coming at you. Which I really do not like. It's really annoying. I'm like, really? You yeah, see that? Mm -hmm. It's like really annoying. Like these, especially on the weekends, because customers be coming in on the weekends like they're fucking cockroaches. Like, mm. they just storm in, being like, "Can I get this? Can I get this? Get this?" I'm like, be, uh. you know, I just put up with it because you know I'm getting money at the end, so it's whatever. Oh, and here's one. Here's this one story. I hate. There was this one guy who asked. Who asks um, if he can get some cheeses or meat. Or I mean, well, turkey in a sense. Or ham. And we're like 15 minutes to closing. I'm like, are you for real? They pretty much said in the announcements, hello, members, we're closing in 15 minutes. I'm like, well, we could, I could do that in 15 minutes. I can cut something real quick in 15 minutes. But they be asking for like two pounds or something, three pounds or something. I'm like, you do realize we close in 15 minutes and you're asking for how many? Like fit, like freaking like 10 to 15 things? Like, no. I'm sorry, we're closing. I mean, they're, but the whole policy, they were like, we have to cut me for the customers to tell whatever. I'm like, mm-mm. I'm not, I'm not staying after work. I mean, from BJ's, we close from... We, we open at 9 and we close at 9. And I like to stick by that. But no, these customers keep trying it. And it's really, really annoying. It really is. Because I hate those kinds of customers. They be asking for like, like up to 5 or 15, 5 to 10 things when we're like closing in 15 minutes. I'm... I just hate those types of customers. I'm like, uh oh. I rather, I rather do not want to do. The, I don't want to do the cutting. I would rather be in the back finishing, out uh, whatever, cleaning up anything as much as possible. As long as I'm not dealing with some damn customers, I just let my other coworker deal with that because I'm not having that. Mm. Because it's really dumb. Because mm. most of the time, like. If I'm feeling it, I will cut it, but I, I cut like like I'm freaking the flash. Like I have to like speed my ass through that slicer, cutting it, cutting it, cutting it, so I can like get out of here quick. But most of the time, I just let my other coworker do it because I don't feel like doing that. It's really, really annoying, and it's really, I hate it, to be honest. So I just put up with that. Like whatever I can, I just put up with that because I hate it. As long as I'm getting money out of it. Mm. 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 Okay. Oh, I'm gonna tell you guys a story before in high school. <laughs> It was, um, it was a really funny story because when I was um, about to walk to study hall for the last period of the day at, in, um, in school, I was like, I was with, I was walking with a friend and I was like pretending to do karate kicks because, you know, me and that person, we were doing like funny business in the, um, the hallway. We were doing like little karate kicks because we were talking about this one asshole classmate and we say thinking about how we're gonna kick their asses <laughs> and I 
I did a, a high kick in my very good jeans. And while they were also, in a way, tight jeans, I did a high kick in rip my... I <laughs> ripped my jeans. I ripped my fucking jeans. <laughs> I was like, it's in the hallway while there were some people walking. I was like, so, oh my God, I was so embarrassed. I'm like, oh my God. Like, I hope nobody saw that. I literally had to like, go into one of the bathrooms nearby and like, my change real quick into like mostly in my um my gym wear. I was like, <laughs> I that was really embarrassing. Like to be honest, mm, it really was embarrassing. But you know what? I put up with that. You know what? It is what it is. Because everybody knows high school is definitely a in some ways a stressful time especially in four years but you know what like I said, when I first went into high school I was automatically thinking how high school would be like it was in one of those little TV shows or movies you have the um you have the bullies the jocks the the girl clicks mean girls the nerds table uh, I was thinking like that because I, because it was my first time going to high school. I mean, I was nervous going into high school. Because you never know. I mean, I always watched how high school was like when I was watching those shows. And I was like, okay. I'm like, mm. But you know what? High school turned out to not be exactly what I thought. It actually was, in a way, good. Yeah, I mean, I met some friends, some new friends. And it was great. I mean, the first two years can be a bit hard because you always have these expectations. Especially um, in high school because, you know, people can be assholes in high school. Teachers can be a bunch of bitches. But you know what? It is what it is. And I dealt with it. Mm. Man, I need more sauce. I'm, sure, I'm really sure to ask them for a second sauce. Mm. Yeah, I just didn't want to get charged for it. <laughs> mm. I mean, what was it like? Oh, yeah. The first two years of high school, it can be hard. A lot of expectations. A lot of learn. There's sometimes pressures. Sometimes you have to try to fit in with a certain group to make you... To some way, in, their, in your own mind to survive high school. But you don't really do that. That's some stupid shit. I mean, I just went with the people that I like. And not with these goofy assholes. I mean, I did once consider joining the football team, trying to do some sports. But I'm like, I was really self-conscious and very insecure about my, my body. Because, you know, I'm a big person. So, so I was, like, really insecure. And I just, like, didn't want to do sports. I mean, I, I could do other activities, I mean activities that I like. I mean, ooh, ooh, look. <laughs> I mean, I did other activities that I like. I mean, I mostly just stuck around like my sort of friends, my cliques. Because I just like, I want to be comfortable. Not have to put on a motherfucking show. Mm. Like most of these other guys and girls do in high school. They put on this show to make themselves fit in. And I'm thinking like, I don't, I don't want to fit in. 
I want to be around my sort of friends and not be fake. And I did. And I found great friends that I like and love with all my heart. And I'm happy. I'm content. I came out of high school looking like a fucking champ with my friends. <laughs> Even though I'm gonna miss some of them, some of did some of them did move. Some did uh, go to colleges out of state. But you know what? I can always try to find them through via social media, and I do. I think mean, that's cool. Mm. Mm. Let me let me stop. I'll be right back. I'm back on my catch up. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> but anyway, back to that sort of story about how, um, like, trying to fit in all that. Like, be you. Don't try to fit into these, like, stupid crowds and cliques to make yourself feel important or somewhat involved. But, yeah, you don't really have to do that. Um, I, I, I mean, I did do that once. But you know what? I didn't realize. These people are fake as fuck. And I don't want, um, I don't want fake people in my life. Mm. Okay. Okay, and along with the whole high school experience... There always comes in the whole, the dating process of things. <laughs> mm. To be fair, I don't like, there's the thing, I have never ever dated in my entire life. I've just always found it to be you. Yeah. I just always found it a bit weird with the whole dating thing. I mean, to be honest with you, I always, always thought of that I want to be in a sort of relationship, but it's the thing, I don't know how to be in a relationship. I mean, I, I really don't know how to be in a relationship or what to be like. I'll be like sometimes walking through the halls, seeing these couples against their lockers, like either doing a little hand holding or kissing or whatever. Then I'm like, I don't know how this whole dating thing works because, to be honest, I feel like it's not really for me. Because there's a big factor why I always like figured I don't you know how to date. I was very awkward about it because mostly because I'm bisexual and I didn't know what to do with that. I mean, I was very like conflicted. I mean, who should I date first? Should I date a guy? Should I date a girl? And I'm like. I don't know. And that's why I just refrain from my dating and just like, not, well, I don't really give it a chance because, I don't know, I think it is how I view it from my parents of what dating is. Because most of the majority of the time, I lived with my mother. And my mother, she hardly had boyfriends. I mean, most of the times, she were, she, I mean, she does date, but I never really, like, they don't really at most stick around. And my, my father, he was, in a way, with someone who was my stepmother, and I love her. Ooh, excuse me. She was with my, uh, she was with my stepmother. And right now, they're not together, but they still some way get along because... Because um, of the kids. Because I have a half-brother on my father's side. <clears throat> and my dad, he's a good father. He always saying that he will be there for me. Like, depending on who I date or whatever. Like, whether it's a guy or a girl. He, he once sat me down. We were at Atlantic City by the beach, we sat down on the bench and he told me that whoever you go out with or whatever you choose, 
I will love you always. And I was very thankful that uh, my dad was very understanding because I felt like he really did understand it because um, my stepmother, she had a son who um, who was bullied a lot in, in sort of like high school and it was uh, my stepbrother. And I loved my stepbrother. And so he was bullied because, because he was gay. You know, the whole frame being like, black and gay like it's always hard most if you really think about it, it's really hard in the black community because sometimes there's always the stigma that you have to that you ain't a man if if you're gay or bi or lesbian or transgender it's always in a way much harder in the black community but you know what let's go that way i mean oh, okay was oh yeah back to um the dating um Dating, again, I just refrained from dating because I didn't know how to date. I mean, I had crushes. I did. I had a lot of crushes. I was a little, in a way, a little crush whore. <laughs> you know what? It is what it is. And I'm just happy that I got to, um, to share my interests with my friends who I trust with all my might. You know what? It's whatever. Mm. That is so good. Mm. Mm. So, a few bites and I'm almost done. Mm. Mm. Alright. Mm. Plus, I'm getting off for full. Mmm. Again, like I said, if you out there are feeling insecure because you don't know who you want to date or you fear fear that, then I suggest I suggest go in a relationship when you feel ready. Don't be pressured to be in a relationship because certain people in your life tells you like you need to be with this guy or this girl. I'm like. If you're like, of course, like me in the LGBTQ community, like, especially in the bisexual spectrum, you should um, really ignore what most of the people in high school most of the time say, like, why, why are you dating a girl? You should be dating this guy, and why are you with this woman when you should be you know, vice versa. But, like, follow your heart. Don't listen to what other people have to say. Follow your heart and who you want to date. Because, again, like, bisexuality, it's not a sort of gateway for you to transition to, like, either fully gay. Like, it's a real, real sexual orientation. It's just some people have a hard idea, mostly the ignorant people, have a hard idea of what it's like to be bisexual. And it's really aggravating because it may, because most of the time, some people do use bisexual, bisexuality as a gateway to go, to being fully either gay or lesbian or transgender, in which in a way tarnishes, you know, the bisexuality spectrum. And especially, especially hurts in the LGBT community that even our own people discriminate against bisexual people. I'm like, saying that bisexuality doesn't exist, you're just, just afraid to fully come out or like stuff like that. I'm like, why are you judging my sexuality when mostly, most of the time, people judge your sexuality on a daily basis? It should be, uh, as a community, we should be sticking together and you should be like, Like, help me confirm my sexuality more. Instead of just doubting it and making me doubt it. Like, I know what I like. It's like, it, it, it's none of your business if you don't think so. It is it is what it is. Like, we should be supporting each other, not tearing each other down. And it's really sad if you really look at it. Mm. Oh, wow. Mm. 
Okay, last bio. Mm. 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 I'm, oh, I'm getting and I'm full right now, so last bite. All right. Again, be you, especially in high school. Be with friends that you like. Be your own self. Be comfortable with your sexuality. Don't listen to other people telling you otherwise, especially your parents. Because parents is a way of making it about them when it comes to life, the whole coming out process. They'll be like, what did I do wrong? I didn't make you into this. I'm like, like first of all, why are you making this about you when it's about me? I'm confiding in you as my parent or sibling or whatever or friend of what I like. I mean, everybody knows like sexuality can't change. Like, becoming comfortable with yourself and your sexual orientation doesn't change anything about you. You're still your, you're still the same person. It's just either you're just sexually and romantically attracted to the same sex. I mean, like, mm, that's what it is. Mm. Well... Anyway, thank you guys for watching me eat. <laughs> and it was my very first mukbang, and thank you. All right.